Hey all you people, what's going on? It's been a while, but we are back with an eighth generation Honda Accord. It has the K24 engine with the five-speed manual transmission and just about 204,000 miles on the odometer. Today, we're gonna look at its price point, design, practicality, performance, do a zero to 60 time, and lastly, talk about its reliability. At this point, the eighth generation Honda Accord, which spanned from 2008 to 2013, has depreciated enough to where it's a viable option for those people on a budget. I got this car from auction for a little over $3,000, but it needed some work. Right now, at the turn of 2023, you can find a high mileage eighth gen on Marketplace for between four and five grand. All righty. Now, let's talk about the design and the practicality of the 8th Gen Honda Accord. In my opinion, the most attractive variant of the 8th Gen Accord was the later model V6 Coupes. They have a surprisingly classic GT-style swoop to them, especially when you're looking at their toned rear sections. And in my opinion, the other variants were all a little bland, especially the four-door one with its bulbousness to it. Hmm. Okay, so overall the 8th Gen Honda Accord is pretty functional and spacious, but when we're talking about the lower trim levels like this LXS, they can be outfitted pretty sparsely. This example has an automatic driver's side window, automatic door locks, steering wheel mounted audio controls, and an auxiliary input. That's it. No outside thermostat, no Bluetooth, and no fuel economy gauge. Yeah, even this six-way manual seat is a little sparse with no adjustable lumbar and only a modest amount of cushion and bolstering. That being said, the driving position is still pretty good considering it's tilt and telescoping steering wheel. And all things considered, with over 200,000 miles, the interior is holding up very well. With only a couple bulbs out in the console and the only other signs of wear really being the shifter knob and the center armrest. Both of which I replaced when I got this car. Also, the quality of the materials used on the interior are pretty good, most things being soft touch, but even the hard plastics are pretty good looking. The back seat is actually roaming enough for two full-size adults. Wouldn't you say so? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I even like the fact that it has cup holders back here, but that middle seat, <laughs> not so great. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they were right. Yeah, the back seat's not too bad, all things considered, although it would probably be more practical to have a four-door version, rather than having your guests fold themselves into origami to get into the back seat. Okay, I got this. Ah! I'm a freaking airplane! Remember kids, even airplanes have to buckle. Okay, maybe it's not that difficult to get into the back. It's actually pretty easy. Okay, moving on to the trunk. As you can see, the trunk is a very usable size, but will it pass the most important test? Will it sleep a not so handy car guy, also known as the standard unit of measurement? I'm six feet tall, let's put down the rear seats using this little pull lever, pulling them down, and then climbing in. Oh, I have so much stuff in here. Oh, okay, how's this audio? Is this good audio? Uh, I don't know about this. I guess so. <laughs> it's not very comfortable. <laughs> oh, ah. Okay, well, the front seats at least recline all the way. Okay. Now on to the more interesting stuff. How is the eighth gen when it comes to performance? Now, a lot of you know that Honda's K-series engines, like the 2.4 liter that's in this car, are legendary amongst tuners. And that's due mainly to their robust construction and ability to hold up to aftermarket modifications. The tech. But in their stock form, they're fairly tame. With variable lift and valve timing on the intake cam, this particular K24 makes 190 horsepower at 7,000 RPM and 162 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 RPM. Although that makes this engine rewarding to rev out, it kind of makes it feel gutless around town. The gearing of this five-speed manual transmission definitely doesn't help either. It has a surprisingly long second gear with a ratio of 1.614, making it good for nearly 75 miles an hour. Nerd city. Now, the 3.5 liter V6 is clearly the performance option here, making around 271 horsepower at 6,200 RPM and 251 pound-feet of torque at 5,100 RPM. And with more usable gearing, the V6 is probably more engaging to drive. Unfortunately, you couldn't order any trim levels with a limited slip differential, but the V6 Accord can apparently sprint to 60 in less than six seconds. <laughs> now let's see what this old four-cylinder can do without a specialist timing gear. 
Some websites say this will do about 8.1 seconds with the manual transmission and about nine with the automatic. Come on. All right, rev limiter. VTEC just kicked in, yo. <sighs> All right, that's not too bad. 8.9 seconds for over 200,000 miles. Okay, now let's talk about the handling characteristics of the Accord. I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty surprised with the Accord's road manners. It has a well-balanced ride, the steering's pretty precise, and I'm sure that the coupe offers some more chassis rigidity over the sedan version. Plus, this has a front strut tower brace, which I'm sure helps with some chassis flex and understeer. And throttle response is pretty good with the manual transmission. Overall, a surprisingly fun car to drive. Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for. How reliable is the 8th gen Honda Accord? So Hondas in general have been known for their reliability, simplicity, and resistance to abuse and neglect. With some few exceptions around the turn of the century plagued by electrical and transmission issues. Those issues, for the most part, seem to have been massaged out for the eighth generation. So, for electrical issues, the alternator is usually the culprit. Easy enough to replace, not terribly expensive, but this can be pretty dangerous if it fails while you're driving. Also, the ignition coils. Judging by what I've read online, these seem to wear out faster than most other manufacturers. When these fail, you're going to start getting misfires and your car is going to run pretty rough. Super easy and straightforward to replace, not too big of a deal. Another common issue would be the crank position sensor going bad. Again, not a tough one to change. The signs you want to look out for are a check engine light and trouble starting your car. All crank and no start. When it comes to the mechanical failures of the 8th gen Honda Accords, most everything can be mitigated with one simple thing. Performing regular maintenance. The number one thing you need to do is regularly change your oil. And it's astounding how many people don't do this. <laughs> this is going to lead to reliability issues no matter what car you have. The most common issues that you'll get on these engines by not changing your oil are worn out timing components, various clogged oil screens, and nasty carbon buildup on your piston rings leading to excessive oil consumption. The single most common thing affected by this is the VTC actuator. And what that is, is a variable sprocket on the end of your intake cam. It is ridiculously stupid common that these fail by getting clogged or seized up from dirty oil. And this is a very common problem on these Honda engines with millions of vehicles affected. What happens is that they end up getting stuck in the on position. And when you go to cold start your car, you're going to get this nasty rattle for a couple seconds. Oh, wow. oh, that even wasn't, that wasn't that bad. When it's stuck on, it makes it so the engine's intake cam is permanently adjusting the intake valves for more air, which it's only designed to do at a higher RPM. Your engine's going to run like crap at low speeds and also destroy your fuel economy. This also puts extra strain on your timing chain, your guides, and your tensioner. And if this issue goes unchecked for long enough, the timing could potentially jump, and then you're going to have catastrophic damage to your valves and your pistons. I could dive into this way more, but essentially the longer you wait to fix this, the more strain it puts on your timing components, intake and exhaust valves, spark plugs, O2 sensors, and your catalytic converter. The fix for this is to replace that VTC actuator on your intake cam, but it's also a good idea to refresh your timing components while you're in there. Another thing that can get severely damaged from low or poor quality oil is the actual lobes on your cams. These will wear down over time and start to cause performance and misfire issues. This point actually ties into another Honda quirk. Honda still uses adjustable lifters. Over time, the valve lash will actually either loosen or tighten. And this is the reason why a lot of Hondas actually have a ticky sound coming from their timing cover. This can eventually lead to misfires and other issues if it's not adjusted. Honda recommends adjusting your valve lash every 110,000 or so miles. <laughs> but it's really common for people to just never do this in higher mileage Hondas, like this one. I actually had to go in, do the VTC actuator, do the timing chain, and adjust the valve lash. With Honda's automatic transmissions, it's actually really important to keep up with maintenance as well. And if you can, make sure you use genuine Honda ETF fluid. Another common issue with Hondas in general is the 
balance or dampener on the CV axle shafts. What happens is that road grime and debris can get underneath here, collects water and moisture, and eventually rots out. I've had two friends where their axles have actually snapped while driving. Kind of a strange design. One other issue that's actually V6 specific is the VCM software, or Variable Cylinder Management. This is in charge of disabling the firing of certain cylinders on the V6 when it's under light load in order to save fuel. Allegedly, Honda had issues with their VCM software, making it turn off and on at random times, and this caused a slew of reliability issues, from oil consumption to carbon buildup. Thankfully, Honda does have a technical service bulletin fix for this, so if you think you're having this issue, you can reach out to your local Honda dealer. Alrighty, thank you guys for joining me for this 8th generation Honda Accord review. If you think I missed any important points on this Honda Accord or have anything useful to add, please feel free to do so in the comments below. On that note, I will see you guys next time. Take care now. Bye-bye then. <laughs> yep, this is the driving position of all the lowered Accords out there. Saw, dude. Let's see if I can telescope this any farther to me.